they're really doing it. Intel's really doing it. The ARC A770 GPU has been announced for an actual, uh, did I say announced? Announced for an actual launch date of October 12th, which might sound familiar because that's when we should be seeing the RTX 4090 and 4080, well, sorry, 4080 is coming the next month. We should be seeing the RTX 4090 from Nvidia. So this is really interesting to me as a choice of launch date. I mean, from one perspective, you could be like, yeah, Intel's right in there, just competing right on the same day. Another perspective could be, well, maybe they're thinking, you know, well, I couldn't buy my 4090, so I'll buy an ARC A770, despite that not even being at all the same class of GPU. Or maybe they're embarrassed in trying to hide their GPU launch. <laughs> like, because everybody's excited about the 4090. Or maybe they're making a statement that the 4090 is worthless to most people because, well, it's worth too much. So opposite of worthless. The point is the 4090 is so expensive that the vast majority of PC gamers will have no chance or desire to, well, I mean, maybe desire to buy one, but realistically just can't. Um, that's a product for a very specific uh, class of gamer. And the A770 at $329 could be a lot more interesting. But anyway, I just find it absolutely fascinating that they're going with that same launch date as NVIDIA. And the pricing is listed at $329, which is what the, uh, the RTX 3060 is supposed to cost at launch. And then by this point in its life should have been lower than that. However, it's never really been that price and is currently still closer to the 370 to $400 range. So the A770 is positioned to at least be price competitive. Ah, let me jump out of the way here. Um, and according to Intel, uh, they claim that it could offer up to 65 better percent peak performance versus competing products, which pricing wise, you would assume is the 3060 in ray tracing. Although the competing product, I guess, could be an AMD GPU in that price class. I don't know, guys, it's hard to say, uh, but they did seem to be working hard on their ray tracing technology. So that's something, although again, at this price point, I don't know, we'll see. It'd be interesting if they had good ray tracing at that price point. I've been a bit underwhelmed by most of the lower end GPUs ray tracing on the 3000 series. Now, um, I don't know, we'll have to see how this thing performs because it seems like in a DirectX 12 games, and I'm ignoring ray tracing, it is gonna actually be better than an RTX 3060. But in older graphics API games, um, it could do significantly worse. The drivers need a lot of work. And so, yeah, it's the driver software side of things where you'll want to be careful. So if you haven't been paying attention mate, uh, to the last uh, you know, few months of GPU news, maybe you're just getting excited now with the 4000 series coming out, so now you're paying attention again. Basically, uh, Intel's GPUs, we have a lot of software and driver concerns, and you could dig into what we've seen of that. But anyway, if they get that ironed out, could be interesting. At least it's not over $1,000. <laughs> Uh, now, we're also seeing them announce an entry-level ARC 310, A310. Now, they already have an ARC A380, which is fairly low-end. By the way, again, if you're new to this, A3, it's kind of like, you know, how Intel's CPUs have an i3 for the lower end, i5 for the mid-range, and i7 for the higher end, and sometimes there's some extra numbers at the end there, right? So A3 is low-end, and 10 would be like the lowest of the low-end. Whereas a seven would be, you know, more like your i7, where it's your higher end, uh, right? And then the 70 is, you know, above like the 50, that kind of a thing. Anyway, so the A310 looks like it's gonna be very, very weak. I'm curious what the price would be. This would maybe be interested at, in, interesting as a low profile graphics card because being at 75 watts, it shouldn't need a separate PCIe power connector. So I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see what actually happens with that, but considering the uh, A380 is already fairly low end, and this is cut down significantly from there, uh, you'll see it's at six XE cores instead of the eight that are on the A380, and a 90, 96 XMX engines opposed to 128. 
Uh, the memory bus is 64-bit instead of 96-bit. It has four gigabytes of memory instead of six. So this has already stepped down significantly from the A380, but the A380's MSRP was already only $139. So are we gonna see like a sub $100? Or could we see $99? I don't know. Uh, the other GPU vendors aren't really serving that price point. So maybe Intel's finding room there. Um, Anyway, what I'm more excited about is the fact that Intel's version of DLSS, right, it's not DLSS, but it's the same idea. It's an ups upsampling technology that works a lot like DLSS, and unlike AMD's FSR2, uh, it is actually trained on a machine learning algorithm to tweak all of the you know, settings and upscaling process, which means it is in some ways more like DLSS, and it's out. I've actually already tested it, at least my initial testing, in uh, Tomb Raider last night, because that's one of the games it's out in. So if you haven't checked out that video, because usually I do a video in the morning, I did one last night. It was me testing XCSS on my RX 6800 XT, and we did see some very impressive performance gains and image quality, although not perfect. I'm very interested in testing this out on some other GPUs, uh, maybe lower end GPUs from AMD, maybe a GTX 1060, see if it runs on that kind of hardware. Because that's the cool thing about this is unlike DLSS, this does support other brands using a DP4A fallback, meaning it's not gonna work as well as it does on, on Intel GPUs. Uh, because it's hardware accelerated on special, you know, matrix multiplication cores on the uh, Intel's own hardware. But honestly, their market share is basically zero right now. So to gain uh, developer support, it's important that they made this run on other GPUs. So anyway, I'm really interested to see that. Uh, it looks like it's also out now in Death Stranding Director's Cut. And this appears to also have added FSR 2.0 support. Now, um, I'm interested in testing this now. Again, I don't know when I'm gonna have time to make all these videos. <laughs> um, but I, you know, seeing XESS against FSR 2.0 on AMD hardware or uh, you know, GTX NVIDIA hardware will be really interesting to compare both the image quality as well as the performance gain because you know, both could be a factor. If they gain the same performance, you'd wanna go with whichever one looks better. But if maybe FSR 2.0 gains you better performance than XESS does, and maybe the image quality was slightly worse, but pretty close, you know, maybe you'd wanna go that one over the other one. Anyway, there's a lot more to test out, I have no idea. I'm also curious, I do have a Steam Deck now, so I'm curious how this would run on the uh, little integrated, uh, you know, uh, hardware in the, uh, in the Steam Deck. Anyway, um, I'm excited about all that, but uh, Intel is also announcing their 13th gen core Raptor Lake desktop series. And there's some interesting stuff going on here. First of all, if you wanna take a look at the like pricing stuff and all of the various specs, ah, I don't have time to read through all the various specs here at the moment. I've talked about these a lot in previous videos where all of this stuff was leaked well ahead of time. Uh, but there are some interesting charts here. One thing is um, they're claiming, and I would love to see this verified, that if you run it at 65 watts, talking about their new flagship 13900K, that its performance would actually match the 12900K at 241 watts. But the 13900K will actually draw more power than a 12900K, um, and when it does, you know, at the same power, it can be 37% faster and at uh, a little bit more power, you can go up to 41% faster. So if you push the power, you can get more performance. But if you draw, if, if for underclockers out there, it looks like you actually could get very good performance um, at, at, at extremely good efficiency if this is true. So, you know, that remains to be seen. They're claiming a 15% single thread performance gain and 41% multi-thread performance gain um, over their previous generation, 13900K versus 12900K. But one thing about these slides, and I'll mention this more as we get into the gaming slides, is the memory configurations that they were using on the competing, um, the competing systems were not as fast as the memory they were using on the 13900K. 
So that's an important thing to note. For example, here, they're mentioning that their 5950X that they're comparing to in these gaming board, uh, things are, are running at DDR4-3200. Um, it's not listing the uh, CL timings here, so if those are extremely fast, 3200, like CL14 could be good. They have the rest of the performance index here, and honestly, guys, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, late making this video this morning, woke up late. So um, anyway, just keep in mind that these are marketing slides from Intel, and it seems like they're using not the fastest memory on their competitors but they are claiming, claiming some performance gains against the 5950X here. The problem is the 5950X wasn't the gaming flagship of the 5000 series. The 5800X3D was, and apparently, to Intel's credit, they did put it in this graph, but I guess they're so scared of it that they just put it as a little line here so that you don't notice it. I don't know, this is bizarre. Like, Intel, either put it in the graph for real or don't, this just makes it look like you're scared and trying to hide things. Not scared in the sense that the 13900K can't beat the 5800X 3D, although in some games it can't, like in World of Warcraft Shadowlands and in a Mountain uh, and Blade 2 Bannerlord, uh, but in other games it at least ties or wins, like CSGO Total Warhammer 3, uh, F122 looks like uh, kind of almost a tie, you know, but some games it has a decent decent win here, like Rift Breaker, Arcageddon looks pretty big, Marvel Spider-Man Remastered, decent. But the point is here, similar to what we saw with AMD's new CPUs, the 5800X 3D from the last gen is a bit of a spoiler here, where it's not beat by much, and in some games is ahead of the newer generation technology. And since that's available on cheaper motherboards with cheaper memory, <laughs> You know, it, it it makes the value, the gaming value proposition questionable. Also, this is the 13900K, which is going to be extremely expensive compared to a 5800X 3D. So it'd be interesting to see what the lower end CPUs offered in gaming performance. Uh, in this chart, we're seeing a whole bunch of games. I guess I'll, I'll get out of your way here. And this is the 13900K versus the 12900K. But once again, I'm fairly certain when you check the performance index, the 13900K is operating with higher memory speeds here. So keep that in mind. It's a little, could be misleading and honestly doesn't look like in some games it does much better at all. And in the games where it is doing better, I mean, sure, League of Legends, Rainbow Six Siege, Dota 2, you know, you'd want extremely high frame rates, but the thing is you're already getting hundreds of frames, so how much does it really matter? And that goes back to my last video topic, which is some people watch my video about, you know, you might not need to buy the new AMD CPUs. Sorry, my heater noise just kicked on. But anyway, you might not need to buy the new AMD CPUs because your current CPU might be good enough. And I saw some comments like, AMD shill, you better say, uh, sorry, not AMD, Intel shill, you're just trying to delay for that. Like, guys, my, my point stands. Most In most situations, these new gaming CPUs are faster than your GPU, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> That's my point. Um, uh, anyway, whatever, let's move on. Uh, they, they also mentioned that there would be a 6 gigahertz CPU, like it would run at 6 gigahertz stock, so there will be a 13900K S version coming out in early 2023. Um, last time Intel did this, it was when the 5800X 3D came out uh, last gen, we saw a 12900K S version come out with a golden bin sample with super high clock speeds to try to retain a claim at the gaming performance lead. So my guess would be that this would be a response to the anticipated X3D chips from AMD's 7000 series so they can continue to battle over that performance gaming crown when your GPU is not even keeping up anyway. But it's good marketing. <laughs> now, we've actually already seen a leaked benchmark for this 13900KS, apparently, uh, showing it up to 19% faster, a single thread and 55% faster multi-threaded versus a 12900KS version. Uh, so that's interesting. Again, it looks like a CPU Z benchmark, and I'm taking these figures from the WCCF tech article over here. Um, so anyway, it does look like it would be, eh, let me jump out of the way here, uh, significantly faster even than the, the leaked scores we've seen for like a 13900K. So the S version does look like it's gonna be faster. 
Anyway, interesting stuff, uh, but let's go ahead and move along here with the video. Uh, there was apparently a 34-core Intel Raptor Lake S wafer being displayed at this Innovation 2022 event, um, which caused some confusion because that doesn't seem to match up with any of the hardware. We're expecting, you know, 24 cores, you know, 16 efficient cores and eight performance cores, that kind of a thing. We're not expecting 34. Uh, looks like this article has been updated with uh, a video that might be breaking that down a little bit more. I'm not too sure. Uh, but you could um, jump in here. I link all my sources in the description, but I've got to move on with the video, guys. Got to get my kids uh, kids to school here pretty quick. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, uh, this is uh, another article about the same thing. Okay, we've seen Radeon Monster Profile Volt and Frequency Optimization Tool for RDNA 2 GPUs under development for Hydra Software. Uh, this looks interesting. I'm seeing some people reporting some pretty monster results showing like an RX 6800 XT um, clocked up to uh, allow it to outperform a 6900 XT in RTX 3090 Ti in 3D Mark times by tests. So interesting. People, I've been seeing comments on my channel asking me, will I be able to test this? I don't know if I'll have time to test this, to be honest, we, we shall see. Uh, the Aenea 2 and uh, Geek um, Ryzen 7 6800U gaming consoles, so, you know, Steam Deck, Deck competitors in terms of, like, form factor and handheld gaming PC type of thing, uh, but these would be um, significantly more expensive, but the Ryzen 7 6800 uh, APU is more powerful than the one in the Steam Deck, so you might have more raw power here, Although, you know, the Steam Deck has a lot of cool optimizations with Steam OS and all of that. So, interesting. Uh, don't have a huge amount of time to continue talking about that. I will mention that the new AMD drivers are out. This is um, to support the Ryzen 7000 series processors and the game Grounded. And there's some new NVIDIA drivers out, uh, which is bringing DLSS support to Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is very good to see. And we're uh, seeing game-ready support for Overwatch 2. And it looks like an RTX 4090 already went on sale in Hong Kong two weeks before launch. Uh, <laughs> and apparently managed to sell for over for $1,000 above the US MSRP. So, hey, interesting. <laughs> but I think it would make sense to wait till launch to then have to buy it for $1,000 over MSRP from real scalpers. Anyway, <laughs> I hope all of you have an excellent day. Look, at, uh, Keep an eye out, because I think I will be trying to test out more DLS, uh, not, she's XESS, uh, and all of that. I don't know uh, when exactly all that will be launching. Maybe even later today. I hope all of you have an excellent day.